Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Roll Stars Draft Show. If you have been missing out on the majority of this weekend and are wondering what's this all about, first, I'm Jay Mack. i got Mifflin joining me here on the desk. We'll have Gormizer as well, who's going to be talking to the, the captains for this Roll Stars event. I think he's actually walking over right here to join me at the moment. But for this Roll Stars, what it's going to be is the team that just won. That was the Minotaurs of our Divisional Stars. They are going to be your first seed team and your first pick captains for all of their roles. And on the Manticores, all of them will be the second pick captain. What will be is everybody will pick one player at a time. So it will be a Minotaur, and then it will be a Manticore, and then a Minotaur, Manticore, all the way down until we have drafted everybody for a single role. We're going to start with the carries, then we're going to move over to the jungles, then we're going to go support, mid, and solo will be the full order of the day. So if you have a specific one you want to tune into, there's your order. And like I said, everything will start with the carries, making sure that you pick five players for each of the teams. Wondering who's the extra players, because there's only eight SPL teams. As I mentioned, we have two SCC teams. Niflheim Wargs and the Valhalla Valkyries are also up for grabs for these teams to be drafted through. So we can take a look and kind of show you some of the graphics and some of the faces of who is able to be picked up for these ones. As you can see, it'll be Vay Porsche Coast, the captain for one of the carry teams, and then Vote will be captain of another. And as you can see, one of the faces seems a little different in there, one that you might not have recognized immediately. It's actually going to be Streak Up joining in place of Panda Cat this time through. So instead of Panda Cat jumping in, as he had just recently jumped in CSPL, it will be Streak Up replacing him this time. And then on the very end, you can see Wowie and Davey will also be joining the remainder of the SPL carries for this draft. Everybody else will be your respective SPL roles and SCC for the representatives from both EU and A of SCC. But as mentioned, because of a Porsche Coast and his team won, he will have first pick and vote will have second pick for his draft. And I wonder what these carries are going to go, because when we talked to Venenu Myth in a post game, I kind of asked him what his thoughts were about, you know, maybe some of the roll star potential outcomes out there. He said that carries are at the bottom, then it's mids. He didn't yep. specify anything beyond there. No, he's right. So do you, do you really think it matters then for the carries who they pick? They can just grab anybody that they want. Or who do you think is the best, I should say, who do you think is the best off-roll carry? Man, number one free agent right now on off-roll, got to be Cycle and Spin, right? Like, and, and, and it's like not even particularly close, I don't think. It might be a good shout to go there. But the good news is we're going to have to delay any longer. We can jump right over to Gormizer and the carries, the captains, to see who they're going to draft for their roll stars. In spirit with Coast and Vote, you can imagine them here. Their voices are going to be joining us as they go through their draft. So Coast is going to be first pick, as you just saw the graphic that J-Mac showcased. They're going to go one by one until we're done and have the teams for the carries. Uh, and so I guess, uh, assuming you can hear me and assuming we can hear you, uh, Coast, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing very good, thank you. It's an old <laughs> Dutch amp. Are you ready to, to be a captain? Do you have a team formed in your mind? Uh, I've got a, a rough outline of I think how it will go, so I'm feeling confident. I think uh, everyone's ran the ADCs off, so. I, I mean, at the desk, even the desk was just like they—they they were just doing it, like right there, like I'm five feet from them. They were already going. Vote. What about you? You feeling pretty, uh, pretty ready to be a captain? Got a team maybe in your mind? Uh, honestly, nope. I'm just ready for bed. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate the honesty. We'll see what you, what team you end up with. Hopefully, the sleepiness doesn't necessarily tank the draft. Uh, as I guess we go over to, to Coast, and Coast, you saw all of the teammates, you know, everybody that is in the SBL plus the three SCC players. Who in your mind is a, is first pick? Uh, I'll take Yarko for first pick. Yarko for first pick. That one, yeah, look, that seems a little free, uh, maybe a little easy for you. Uh, I know the desk had been talking a little bit about, like, Cyclone. I think Hardcore comes up in that conversation. So Hardcore plus Coast is team one. Vote. How about you? Who are you going to go for? I will take Cyclone Spin. Cyclone Spin. So, desk on the money with that one. On who's going to be the off roll. Uh, so, very quick and rapidly depleting. Ghost, who's your next player? Uh, I think I'll take Stu. Stu it is. Stu locked in and locked in early. And, Ghost, I do want to ask, just because this is now your second pick, I want to get a, a little vibe check, right? Well, you know, hardcore. I think Cyclone. Everybody knows, like they they've played off role mechanically. Those guys are really good. Uh, I know in the past you and Barra have had some like bad blood. Are you gonna avoid him, or is he somebody that yeah. you see maybe <laughs> coming with you? 
going to try and avoid Barrow at all costs. If I, if I have to take him, you know, I'll do some charity work and give him a free win, but you know, I'd rather see him lose, personally. <laughs> well, as of right now, you got Harcourt, you got Stu. Uh, vo hopefully you had a little bit of time there to try and figure it out. So I'm going to step out of the way, see what we have to work with. Uh, you've already got Cyclone Spin. Uh, who are you looking at next for your team vote? I want to throw a curveball to streak up. Really? Now I'm I'm kind of curious. What's fueling your your decision here? I just know this man is capable of amazing off field positions. I've seen him in mid lane. He is dangerous. Look at that. That's smart thinking. He's going already for those off rolls. So streak up picked up here for vote. Uh, Coast, who takes? Uh, who do you take now? Third. I, I just have to take Roid now. I'm surprised he got this far. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a free pick, right, for you? Uh, so, Hardcore, Stu, Netroid to fill out your team. Three players left. We got Davey, Wowie, and Barrett towards the bottom. Vote. Where are you going? Uh, I think we'll go Barrow. Going with Barrow. I've seen the elephant gameplay. <laughs> he could be locked in. Uh, you've got the belief, right? Something that Coast yeah. apparently was lacking in Barra. You believe in him. Uh, you've been playing in the league long enough. You've placed him enough times. Uh, you've got the trust right there. So three teams finished. We got the reasoning. Coast, Wowie, Davey, last two left. Who are you picking? Uh, I'll, hmm, I'll go with Wowie. I'll pick that one Wowie. He's going to pick up Wowie? And in a powerhouse, which means Davey, vote immediately already over to you. Now, vote, I do want to ask, because looking at it, you know, obviously Barra, Cyclone, who have been in the league for a long time, veteran players, uh, Cyclone, who's played off-roll before, Barra, who you have faith in, but a couple of, uh, of European powerhouses, what's maybe influencing that in your decision? Obviously, Davey kind of given to you, but do you like the, the team that you've ended up with? Uh, yeah, why not? Could be, <laughs> could be worse. Do you have? Could be worse. What are your expectations going uh, going into the tournament with these guys by your side? I'm for fun gaming. <laughs> for fun gaming. That's what we're gonna end up with. Coast. Pretty much same question to you, man. What are you thinking about the team that you've gotten? A lot of big names on that squad. Where's your mind at? Um, I'm very happy with what I got. I think we we could definitely win, but I'll see what the vibe of the team wants. If we want to for fun it, we'll for fun it. But if we want to win, you know we're gonna win. Well, I I see hardcore and Netroid. I don't know. It feels like a team right over there that that, that maybe wants to win uh, for you, Coast. But I'm excited to see what they have. There are the two carry teams that are gonna be playing in Roll Stars. So vote, Coast. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your drafts. And we'll go back to the desk. And so thank you so much for the carries for your first round of draft there in Mifflin. I'll ask right out. Who do you think comes out on top of that immediate draft? Do you think that one goes to Coast or to Vote? Man, Vote said he's for fun gaming. I'm thinking he's for fun drafting as well. Uh, he, he he has costed my boy Cyclone Spin with some of those mid selections. Uh, yeah, uh, Coast comes out pretty heavily there. Uh, you know, Coast gifts over a few picks that I probably wouldn't have towards the tail end as well. But, f you know, punch for punch, pound for pound, I think Coast got that one. You think at the end of the day for Coast, win or lose the event doesn't matter. It sounds like he just wants to beat Barracuda more than anything, whether it be him actually getting a victory. Actually, we will get to see the roll versus roll kind of in the middle of the tournament. But I think at the end of the day, he just wants to place higher than Barracuda at the end of it all. Yeah, and I think you know, realistic, realistic there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think you could bet on that for sure. I, I don't know what that beef is uh, per se. Couldn't tell you where it came from. Barracuda's like 30. Shouldn't be beefing with, like, a, a teenager, <laughs> but, like, that's fine with me. I was starting to wonder maybe where the, the off-rolls go for those. Because, I mean, Yarkord is solo. That makes sense. You can throw him in a solo lane. That's where he was for a long time. Stu, I'm not sure where I land Stu as far as things go. Netroid, not Stu quite sure. Stu is a KD player. KD. Uh, that, that's where he's landing on my list. <laughs> we'll have to see where everybody lines out there. But that was all the carries. News is we got our next role ready to go. We have the junglers, we have Oath with us, and then we'll have Panatom on call joining Gormizer. That's right, standing right beside Oath as we get prepared to, to start up the draft. Uh, Panatom, though, I'm going to start asking you some questions here, which is mainly just after the event, looking at the other junglers, like how confident are you feeling, uh, I guess, as a second pick captain and in the junglers in this uh, draft and in the tournament with the team that you might end up with? Um, I'm feeling really confident. I think we have a lot of potential in the jungle, so let's get it. Everybody always talks about you guys as like the, the best of the best, so that's kind of what we're, we're anticipating. Oath, uh, you're going to be going up first here, and so confidence in the junglers is there. 
where is your mind going for a first pick? Uh, I think my first pick will be adapting. Adapting, just that easy. What exactly about adapting called to you for a first pick? Uh, I'm just like really confident in him as a, a drum leader uh, because I kind of want to play mid in this journey because okay. I think uh, I could just like do pretty well. And uh, yeah, I just have a lot of con confidence in him, you know? Nice. Yeah, you're going to work together, and that's kind of your belief. Panatom, I'm kind of curious into to what your thoughts are, because I did not, I sh maybe should have asked Vote and Coast the same thing. Did not expect roles to come out that soon. Figured it was maybe going to take a week to figure it out. Uh, do you, Panatom, have someone in mind, or are you in mind? Like, what role do you think you're going to shoot for? Yeah, uh, My role, I have no idea, but I know who I'm picking. Go ahead. Let's go for it. Who are you going to be picking uh, out of who's left? I'm picking Twig. Twig, up, and force. I, just so you know, uh, peanut gallery-wise, I hear genius from Myth. Uh, what, <laughs> what fuels your, your pick for Twig? Uh, I feel like Twig, like looking at the junglers, he feels like the more flexible on rolls. So he's my better chance to win. And sometimes it's just that easy. And considering his competitive history, probably a great choice for what you're going to have. So now Twig Oath has gone over towards Panatom. Uh, you can see who's left. Who are you going for? Uh, give me Stream. Scream. Easy, quick, and yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. v uh, very good uh, in general and off roll, you know. Seems like a, a good, easy uh, choice. Yeah. <laughs> five M's, five kills. That's what he's going to be getting. Like that's, that's the whole thing. We'll see where he goes, see what he does. Uh, but it seems like it's going to be great. So Panatom, uh, the jungle pool is dwindling. But you still got a lot of great names up there. Who are you, who are you looking at next? Uh, my next choice is going to be Sam for Soccer. Sam for Soccer. Now, this is the fun thing that's great about Sam. Playing in the SCC, even though he's a world's MVP, uh, how are you feeling about picking him up so, so early? That's two SCC players, technically, now that have gone in that spot. Um, I don't know. He just have the best Silla I ever seen. I mean, the <laughs> second best Silla, so that's good enough. <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard that. Like he he remembered who he sits next to, like in booths most of the time, and like who he's played with in the past. That's where the second best Silla comes from. That's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, Oath, no more Sam. Four players left. Who are you looking at next? Uh, give me Lazbra. And what what makes you think Lazbra is the the next up? I think uh, his comms are just gonna be really good for uh, our team, and just will be very insightful. Very insightful. He's going to be the leader that the, the rest of these guys need when they're not playing their role, right? <laughs> kind of whip them into shape, uh, which is starting to limit us. Kirmi, Sino, we still got a few left from the SBL towards the bottom, Panatom. Uh, and so where are you going next with your pick? Um, my next pick is going to be Sino. Now, Sino. So cold-blooded killer is what you're looking for here. What does Sino bring into yeah. this team that you were, you, you were needing? Uh, he looks like a spicy soul laner, like he's going to cook up. Okay. Yeah. So you're already starting to, to divvy up roles where these people are going. You're taking the captain role seriously. 50-50 shot. Oath, where are you going now? Uh, give me Kirmi. Kirmi, just as simple as that. And now, what about Kirmi, I guess, called out to you of the two? Um, he's obviously a really good player. I'm, you know, really good friends with him, you know, have synergy. So, uh, yeah, I just... Feel confident with him, too. And with Lasbury kind of leading the way for the team, right? That's going to do great. So if I remember correctly, and J-Mac, you can thumbs up me, thumbs down me if I'm wrong. That means Worst Turtle is the one who's going over here to Panatom. And so Panatom, Worst Turtle, definitely, like, I mean, a top jungler in Europe. From what we just saw from Vote, European players seem to be heavily valued. From what we've seen at Lands, European players rightly valued. How do you feel with getting him on your team? I think you left the call. I think he's out of there. I think he got his team, no. and he did. Hey? Oh, no. Yeah, Panatom. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat? <laughs> yeah, how are you feeling? You've now got Worst Turtle on your team, man. Uh, European players have been great at past lands. They've been great what we've seen in the SCC. How do you feel about having him? Uh, it felt really good. I think he's going to be the jungler of this team, so he got to carry us. There we go. Sometimes it's just that straightforward. Here are the two teams for the junglers. I think everyone's excited to, to watch what you guys have to offer. And so we're going to go back to the desk, break these two down. So from what I'm gathering, it seems like Panatom's already got the roles figured out. I'm trying to see where everybody lands. It said Worst Turtle uh, Jungler, from what it sounded. And I believe he's already got his 
We got solo Sam, laner figured out Scylla. for Sam. No, Sam to was Sino a good was mid. Solo. Sino was solo. Sam was Scylla. Sam was Scylla, so probably good. mid. So that means is Panatom going to be playing support? Is he going to be playing ADC? I guess to be determined exactly where that one lies out. And it just feels like, you know, Oath was just kind of picking picking people he, he's friends with, people he thinks that is pretty good, he think wins out on the draft this time. Oh, Panatom washed him. Oath fell into one good selection. I feel like Kirmi was criminally underrated there uh, as a support. I would put Kirmi in support. But other than that, he definitely gets the, the most valuable pick that was available. I think Captain Twig is just the best thing you could have gone for. And then Sino as well. Th those were, of the selections available, I think that would have been my top three in that order. So Twig, Sino, and then Kirmi. So, so far looking at the carries that we have seen selected from both of the teams, from what we've seen divided out amongst the junglers, if these four teams at any point had to square off against each other, the, these junglers versus these carries, do you think both jungle teams still beat out both carry teams? Or you oh, think that no, there's a chance? No. no, yeah, no, Oath has sold. Oath has sold severely. So you think that team is imploding? That jungle team is falling apart. They're that gonna argue like minute one. <laughs> they're gonna go. The conversation is gonna be like this, guys. Are we for funding this? Wait, there's money on the line. Let's play. They're gonna get first flooded in the first five minutes. They're like, all right, guys, we're for funding. Like that's exactly how it's going. Yeah, just a small reminder that it is a little bit of prize money at the very end of the Roll Stars event. So playing for a little bit of prize out there, but still having a little bit of fun playing between the roles. And as mentioned, all the players are going to be going through and playing on some of the different roles there. But our next roundup is going to be the supports, which is one of the ones that have been talked about as potentially being one of those top roles. So we'll have to see what Ooh. our support minds Who have put that? together over here as we go back over to Gormizer for the draft. All right, we've got support. Now, depending on who you ask and who you talk to, Everyone, when they're ranking, like, the impact of play in a game is usually, like, jungle support, and then everybody else is there. And that's where the argument maybe really shows up. Uh, Off-roll becomes a completely different conversation, so things get a lot more interesting. But I got Hurry, and I got Jake standing right next to me as we jump into the draft. Hurry, you're going to be going first. So first, uh, I guess, like, do you think the players that are at the bottom there are good at an off-roll? And then when you finish that, go ahead and give us your first pick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there are some supports that are good at off-roll. I think there's some of us, um, maybe including myself, that are dead weight off-roll. So, uh, I think you, it, you played mid. <laughs> you put me in that role right now, I'm dead weight. That's all I got to say. Um, but yeah, there's some good players in there uh, that are for off-roll, hopefully. And who do you think is going to take that first spot on your team? Uh, I'm going to pick Aurora for my first uh, pick. Solid choice. What, what's, what's fueling the Aurora pick here? Uh, Aurora just has a really good history in events like this, and he takes it really, really seriously, and I know he'll probably put in time, like, out of it. Um, and he's just, like, uh, I think he'll, he's really flexible. Like, he could probably play all five roles to, like, a decent level, too. And he just has a lot of uh, experience with playing other characters from the early days. So I just think he's a good all-rounded pick. No, I am kind of curious because, like, you know, it didn't feel like the carries maybe knew what roles they were going into kind of kind of halfway through. The junglers felt like they knew. Do you have an idea what roles, like, that, that you're already thinking of for these players? Yeah, I think I'll just have to see, like, how... I think with, like, the last picks of the people that are less known for off-rolling, that might get, like, you know, like, maybe I have someone that can only play support. So I'll just kind of have to wait to see, like, how it pans out, I suppose. Just have to wait and see what the rest of the team is. Which means, Jake... Uh, you get to go up next. So I, I want to know up front how confident you feel, I guess, not only for like yourself as a captain, but also like for those players that, that had been listed, like the other supports, and how well they'll be able to do as a team for you. Yeah, I'm not really feeling too confident. You know, like the support, like off rolling, just isn't usually like historically good. Uh, and, I'm a and I'm the second picker, so like I'm just getting the bottom of the barrel, basically. Um, but, you know, I think I'll be able to draft a good team here. You know, uh, yeah. And with that, I'll be picking um, Giant E-Tikes. Giant E-Tikes? Yeah, so who? Freya <laughs> support player. He's famous for his... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Genetics is the, the, the where we go. Yeah, he's been playing a lot of fun. Uh, now, do any of the recent picks, recent games maybe from uh, from this weekend impact your decision positively or negatively for you there is money on the line this time so i'm sure you know he'll be trying yeah. um big money player that guy. yeah yeah and that's how we know genetics shows up and is the second draft in this one so hurry it's going to bounce back to you a couple of big names off the board now but a lot of really good support players still left behind who are you thinking of next 
Yeah, so this one might be a little bit of a surprise, but I heard that he played uh, Jungle before, so I don't know that much about him, but uh, I'm going to go with Preds because he has experience in that role, so hopefully, you know, that that hopefully he's as good as people were telling me. <laughs> you know, like like Jake said, we're probably screwed anyway, I guess, like for really being real because we're like the supports like off rolling, but, you know, just take what we can get. Anyone that has any experience on another role would be nice, so. So you're going to, at this point, maybe a little bit of hearsay in there. No actual evidence for you to, to, to work with. Yeah, it could be sabotage. I don't know. <laughs> you could have paid him to say that, and, and maybe he did. Look at that. That's, he's got a cold-blooded smile, blank face, poker face. You'll never be able to guess with this guy. Uh, but a very early pickup there from Europe. And so, Jake, now you have the opportunity to respond. Who's next? Um, going to need to see this infographic. Uh, mm, I'll go with... Wrong you. Wrong you. Now, we've seen wrong you support-wise. Phenomenal. I haven't personally seen him off-roll. Anything maybe in influencing that, or is it just he's a good dude? Um, he's a jazz player. You know, surely he's been honing his mechanics in there, playing some, some you know, warriors, assassins maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> a, a little bit of hopes and prayers in there. <laughs> Just a little bit of hope. It feels like for both of you, you're hanging on to to, to try and get these going. Uh, so quite a uh, field still left, right? PBM, I saw Gamma that's still down there. A lot of supports that are still on the board. So hurry with the next pick. Where are you going? I'm going to go Gamma. That was really fast. So you've been thinking about it a little bit while, while Jake was going. What, what about Gamma calls out to you? Uh, I think Gamma actually has a lot of experience playing other roles too, like in ranked and stuff. He's a bit of a smurfer as well, and I've seen him like do well in other roles before. Um, so I think he's like another just guy that has experience playing the other roles. Um, I think he's played other roles in the past as well competitively. So I think that once again, anyone that has some experience in the other roles could go a long way. I think he's adop adaptable too, so that's nice. I'm glad you said that that way because if you had said like adapting, I I would have had to make the bad low hanging fruit joke that that was there that's three picked up for hurry leaving not uh, the the largest field left still a lot of big names a lot of big minds down there though jake uh, and so knowing uh, what you're going up against not just in hurry but also in the field that we've seen so far where are you going next um i'll take pbm i've seen him play uh, mid before so once <laughs> so you know so did, that one game is, is enough to instill hope in you. It was good. There you go. Mike played a good mid game once. Timeline, don't quite know it, but he did do it. And that's enough for Awesome Jake to pick him up. Two picks left, hurry. I mean, you're going to get one. You get to choose out of the two. Last one goes over towards Jake. So who's it going to be? Yeah, so Neil's a really good friend of mine. That being said, I don't want him on my team. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go Quig because I think uh, Neil's dead weight off roll. Um, love you, Neil. Um, <clears throat> don't want you on my team. Though. And now, also, just to throw out there, like, a month ago, this dude was your coach. So, like, was there, was there any bad blood? Is that because he left? Yeah, I mean, he's a great support. I mean, I've, I mean, he actually, you know, genuinely taught me a lot, but uh, he couldn't teach me, you know, anything about any of the other roles. So um, <laughs> we were going to just go ahead and slap him on the other team. All right, before we go over to Jake, I do want to ask Curry, now that you've got all, all four locked in, the five for your team, what's your confidence level going towards next week? I'm actually really confident. I think I got, like, uh, a good mix of players that are, you know, uh, able to maybe play roles that aren't just support. I actually don't even know, thinking about it, like, who I want to play support, so I think that's a good sign for me that, you know, there's some variability in what we can do. Hey, and sometimes that's the, the best you're going to get, right? A little bit of hope. Maybe they can do it. Jake? I know you, uh, along with Hurry, have expressed not a lot of hope in your fellow supports for their off rolls. But looking at it, genetics, wrong you, PBM, Neil as well for your last pick. How are you feeling about the team you, you're coming out with? I mean, I'm just wondering if Neil's going to be on ping or not. Um, you know, he probably is, right? He's been pinged up. Pinged up. Does That's, that make a big diff for you? You know, it pro probably does. But, you know, I don't think i got a bad team. I'm sure me and the boys can, um, you know, go deep in this tournament. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling hopeful. Y'all can't feel it? Actual aura of confidence radiating off of both Jake and Hurry. It's insane to, to be standing in the middle. I honestly feel a little more confident. But guys, you got your teams. 
your confidence levels are out there for better or worse, no matter where they are. Uh, but we'll see you next week as we throw it back to the desk to break down the drafts. That's three rolls down, still two more to go. Mids and solos will be our final ones there. Miff, what do you think about the first pick? You know, the confidence from from Hurry Wind to pick Aurora as that first. Do you think that was the the clear cut first pick selection for, given the sports that were in the pool? Yeah, I, I think Aurora was the most valuable player out there for sure. Um, I think Aurora might be a little upset with some of the other selections made <laughs> or maybe the timings of them. You know, uh, Aurora, as Hurry said, loves taking these events very seriously. He's got a very good win, uh, win record in, in events like this. I was pretty low on supports before. Uh, to win out on this event, I'm like even lower now. Let me just put you to put you there. You know, it's like, now been dropped a l just a little bit further. The, the ideal draft was not formed. Let's just say that. <laughs> well, we'll have to see if maybe some course correction can be made for our next roll. Mid laners will be the next one up. So we have Gourmizer standing by with the captains for the mid lanes. That's right. I got Vin. I got Dardes, and we got mid lane teams about to be made. And so I'm going to go into this. You know, at, at this point, it's it's. A heat check up front. Vin, how do you feel about the mid lane pool and their capabilities not in mid? I actually wrote it down, and I, I, I was kind of like, we're screwed. But now that I actually looked at it, I think it's OK. You're feeling, feeling more confident now that you've seen the names. Uh, Dart is kind of same question for you. You're looking at, at the, the guys that are going to be joining you. Do you feel like outside of mid, they're as good as they are actually in role? Yeah, I think I've seen a lot of them play outside of mid. So. I'm confident. Confidence is there. The question is just whether or not it's going to be going. Now, Vin, I believe after just winning, you'll be first. So question for you is with all of those players down there, unfortunately, you can't get this guy. Who are you going to first? Uh, Pagon. Pagon. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot of performance from Pagon, but what in your mind stands out as the, hey, that's the guy to go to first? I think he off rolled last year a bunch and won. You know, he played in jungle yeah. instead of Scream. You know, Scream needed the help and showed how it's done. So, yeah. Sometimes it's just that easy. Plus, the dude plays like assassins any time he gets the opportunity. I think he just wishes he was a jungler. Uh, and so maybe it makes sense. Lock him in. It seems like you already have a role in mind for him as well. So, Pagon, already taken off the board. Uh, so, Dardes. Well, who do you think is, is, is the, the next guy to go to, to to fill in a role for your team? Uh, I'm Roth H. Bidman, BMT. BMT. What is it about BMT that's that's calling out to you? I mean, I've just known him for a long time, and I know he can play something else than mid. So, do you, are you coming into this with you know like roles already in mind? Like, hey, I've, I've, I've maybe like I can play support. I, I let him play solo or something like that. I mean, I would not play mid, and I know he's not going to play mid. I think. So we already know you. Just, you know that not mid already. Might maybe sure where, but not mid is the the absolute choice. Then I realize I probably should ask you the same thing. We got the kind of answer with Pagon. Uh, where do you think you're gonna end up? Uh, not sure. I'm just <laughs> see where the team just goes. winging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got the next choice. You've got Pagon. Who on that list is calling to you? Uh, Benny. Honestly, makes sense. Now, does familial ties is is that what you're trying to bind your team with, or is it like literally just performance in game? Uh, he used to play ABC, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> so you're just like, yeah, that dude was in the SEC for years playing carry before he swapped. So like, might as well just throw him back over there. Yep, yep. <laughs> Sometimes that easy. Uh, Dardes, he's got like brotherly love over there. He's 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 got two that. Maybe call out as the off rolls. You you gone with the power of friendship though. Uh, is that going to be the the continuation? Who's your next pick? I think I'm gonna pick Shinto. I just I just know he can play something else. <laughs> I think he used to play solo, right? I want to say yeah. He used to play something else, so uh, I'm confident. Yeah, it's just the belief. That's that's pure belief in Shinto as a player. Which, admittedly, given what we've seen, it's not a bad thing to believe in Shinto. Uh, and so two picks down. We're starting to get towards uh, the bottom. And I will note, the first time that an SCC player hasn't gone in that exact spot. Uh, and so maybe changing some things up. Uh, Vin, we're going back over to you. I see Paul. I see Snoopy. Quite a few options still left. Where are you going? I'm going to go with Snoopy. He used to play support. so And carry. And I feel like he probably played jungle. And yeah. <laughs> so the guy's done it all. The guy's done it all. 
And so at this point, you've got three guys, one who you see, what, last year off roll, one who used to play and carry, one who used to play support and carry in mid. I feel like there's a theme on who you're picking here. Yeah, yeah, got the synergy in, got the brother synergy, I got this, yeah. yeah. The, the, the true <laughs> glue that holds us all together. Uh, as we're getting towards the bottom, Dardes, there, there's not as many left on the horizon. Uh, so where's your mind going next? I just have to beat Paul, right, surely? I'm honestly a little surprised. So why and, and why did Paul go so low and why now? I mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just I, I didn't think about like who's gonna play mid. So I just yeah, that's the least one you're thinking of. So. Oh yeah, because you were like, well, I made like at worst case scenario, you could do that. Now you got Paul though, uh, and look, I mean, Paul's. Well, I was gonna say he's played other things that maybe could be played not mid. We just saw the Morgan in the jungle. Whether it's success or not is is, is up to for debate. But like. Maybe that option's there, but Paul is the lock-in. So then we've got two left. Whichever one you don't choose immediately is going over to Dardes. Right. So who are you? Who are you going for? Um. Yeah, if you want a hint, you want like names real fast. J Max got it open right over there. Uh, <laughs> it's Crimson and Hawk. Hawk yeah. Um. <laughs> Let's go Hawk. Yeah. I'm gonna roll the dice. Yeah. Now is that faith in Europe or is that just faith in, in Hawk himself? I just roll the dice. <laughs> oh yeah, so it is just the true 50-50 <laughs> and Hawk's the one who came up. Uh, that means that you're gonna end up with Crimson. Uh, have you watched a lot of Crimson's play? Do you know what to expect? I have no idea. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you don't gotta apologize to me. He's playing on your team too. <laughs> I'm not offended. Uh, here's the question. Uh, and then I'll go to you then, Vin. Looking at the four guys that are on your team that are going to be playing up there with you, how confident are you feeling uh, against not only Vin's team, but, but the rest of the field? I think I'm feeling pretty good, honestly. I mean, I don't know what... I'm not sure about the roles yet, but I'm sure about, like, three of my roles, like, of the roles in my team. Mm -hmm. I just have to figure out, like, the, the last two, but, yeah, I feel confident. Confident. And that's, good. that's a good way to be feeling before going into a tournament. I'm going to be kicking off Thursday, Vin. You've got... As we had already mentioned, a lot of pliability and Hawk wherever he ends up. So what is your your confidence levels looking at your team? Feeling good about it. Yeah, I think we can take it. Beat the solo laners, you know. Those guys are all crutch players, you know. Sit there, don't do anything, you know. Farm, get tank items. They're OP, by the way. So, yeah, we got this, though. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like... Right now, you know, there's a there's a lot of targets painted football on those guys, right? Like over there, like the, their teams are the ones that everyone wants to beat. It's the solo laners that are standing off to the side. Uh, but you've got your teams. You know where you're headed. You know what the tournament's going to be. So good luck, guys. Thanks for your time. We'll send it back to the desk to break down the draft. That's right. We've now gotten four of our rolls through and are now mid laners. Draft for both of these ones. Who do you think comes out on top for the mid laners in our academy? Do you think Dardos runs away with this one for grabbing a bunch of multi role players? Or do you think if Venedu comes out top for getting not just the brothers, but two of some of the biggest powerhouse mid laners we've had in the league in a while? Bro, Ven cooked them. Like, he rolled them up and smoked them. I don't know what Dardos <laughs> was looking at. The only Ven made one mistake, and it's Snoopy over Paul. That is criminal. I, I just have to imagine he went blind for a moment. But uh, besides that, I mean, that, that is about just what I would have expected getting out of that draft if you were just drafting perfectly all the way through. Getting the brothers, I think, one of the most important things they could have done. Like, that, that is, that's the hard carry right there. Yeah, that is a dangerous duo that he has picked up, whether they actually go to duo or whatever roles they may uh, end up in there. So strong draft so far across four roles, but as much as we still have one more to go, that's our solo laners. And remember, that our solos are also getting that first round buy, so they get to watch the competition kind of soak up a lot of knowledge and see what they can go from there. So let's see what our solo laners are going to draft up. That's right. First round by last tournament win. Fine, okay, there's a good chance you were probably playing at it. I don't. I have no idea. Yeah, it's, it, so winning it. Winning it even. Yeah. So like, not a, there's there's pride on the line to to try and maintain the title uh, going into next week. What are your confidence levels in like the the solo lane pool as a whole? I think we're probably facing off against Baskin's team in the finals. That's that's pretty much it. Or maybe a mid lane mid lane teams are pretty good too. So. Okay. It's the it's that pliability that Vin put together, huh? Yeah. The, like the familial slash brotherly love that was going on to, to glue some of the team's friendship as well. Baskin, what about you? Like looking at the, the field of solo laners, I know a lot of the time people talk about you guys mechanically. Uh, is that giving you a lot of confidence in your team and capabilities and, and what you could draft here? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just looking at the list right there, and yeah, I don't really see any like uh, weak picks or anything. So, yeah, mid lane does have uh, some good uh, off rollers too. I think they might have the most uh, roll swaps like mm -hmm. for a roll. So yeah, I think I think us and mid laners probably be top two at this event. Now you, having just won, do get first pick. And so you've seen the list of it. Of course, a lot of them are in the SBL that you're playing regularly up against, uh, adding in Aqua, who, I mean, depending on how far back you go, you've played with and against, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Julio over on the side. So who are you going to for your first pick? Who do you think is the, 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 just the prime that you need? So uh, I'm going to be first picking Sot. Um, off roll uh, extraordinaire. And uh, definitely grinds the game a lot. So can be picking Sot. Yeah, that dude's playing whatever gods he can in solo if people can give him the permission to. So it feels like it'll work out. Like, you want to play carry? He's got it. Mages, uh, those were a little shaky, but we've seen it. Assassins, they've been there. And so it's Sot first up. Fine, okay. Uh, it feels like that's limited uh, maybe a little bit because mechanically Sot always comes up toward, towards the top of that competition or our conversation. So where are you going with your pick? Uh, I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go Haddix. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw him in the jungle. That's easy dub. <laughs> is there anything, like, fueling the, the jungle decision behind that? Or is it just, like, he just looks like he could do it? I mean, he looks like he could do it. He's so <laughs> handsome, but he could probably do anything. Um, no, I, he just, I see him in rank playing jungle a lot. And, you know, he's got a mean Susano, among other picks, maybe. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, good cover, good cover, good cover. <laughs> Making sure, yeah, it could be anything in the jungle, depending on what he's playing. Might not even be the jungle. Like, you know, like, we don't, we don't even know yet. Yeah, Ooh. saving face here, guys. Uh, Baskin, that means a couple, I would say, of, of top picks that we've seen, especially over this last phase off the board. So where do you go next? Um, I'll be picking Nika, because uh, he also off rolls a lot. Um, he has, he's got a mean ADC, specifically uh, Ishtar. You know, um, so yeah, I could see him uh, see him doing well in the ADC role. See him over there. The guy's been around for a long time. It was like, you know, it was really unfortunate because I think even I did a, a, the video and the script at least talking about it has been convert like conversed as one of the best players of Smite. Period uh, has yet to get that championship. Maybe a roll stars uh, is exactly what he needs for your team to to bring that up. Obviously, it's the same level as lifting the force hammer at the end of the year. Uh, so fine, okay, that means what we've been looking at now is like, hey, this guy seems like he'd be pretty good in an off roll. Uh, I'm kind of curious, especially as we're going halfway through, not only your next pick, but also if you think you'll be in solo or do you think you're going to be somewhere else? I prefer not to solo. I think, you know, I've done quite a few roll cues. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable among the other roles, but uh, you know, I used to play jungle in the SEC, and I think I could play some other stuff. But this this next pick, I know specific role for him that we're going to slot him in. And, you know, we're going to have a good time as well. I'm going to go with Harry, Variety. And what role is Variety going to be playing for you? I don't really want to give the opponents too much. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, 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 mid. He's a, he's a mid lane, fen Venom, Phenom, whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I got you. Yeah. Phenom, I think. Yeah. yeah, we'll go there. That sounds right. Uh, as Variety gets locked in. Uh, Baskin, now that we're halfway through, I'm going to ask you something similar. Like, you know, what role do you see you taking on in this tournament? Um, well, I don't really want to solo, and Sot's definitely going to be, be mid, and uh, Nika's going to be ADC. So I think either support or maybe jungle for me, um, but I'm not really too sure yet. I mean, for a long time, people were just throwing you wherever they could competitively anyway, so it feels like you were kind of prepared for this exact moment. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, knowing who's left, right? Four gone, four left. Who are you looking at to, to fill out the rest of your team? Um, I'm going to be picking up Julio for the uh, solo lane. Um, very uh, serious solo laner. Uh, big fan of his tier and such, so, yep, Julio. And there you go. There you have it, Julio. Uh, who we have seen briefly in the Pro League, but definitely uh, on lands at times, have really solid performances. Tall order to match up, fine, okay. Uh, three left as we start getting towards the, I'm not even going to say like the bottom of the roll, who's left in the roll. And so my question for you, how do you answer a Julio pick? I don't know. I mean, we got two Brits still up there. They're looking good. We got Aqua. He's always looking good. I mean, Does the accent play into your like comms your thinking or is as maybe it appealing in <laughs> other ways yeah maybe i don't know how thick their accents are i know duckies but i, I haven't really spoken to kana but uh 
You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna go Kana. I got a good feeling about him. I'm pretty confident in that one. Do you have a role in mind for Kana? Is it just you know what? That that dude seems like he'd be pretty good anywhere. He looks at, like the type of guy that's pretty flexible. So uh, um, we'll see. We'll discuss as a team first. That's yeah. That's team meeting, team huddle talk, right? That's scrims. nothing to yeah. Scrims. You got to make sure that you're double blocking at least three of the days coming up. It's starting Thursday. You gotta get it together yeah, as fast as possible. Time, but. but hey, Kana locked in solo lane. We're getting down to the bottom. Last two, uh, which means Baskin. You'll get to choose whoever you don't choose. Immediately goes over to find OK uh, between the two of them, which is Ducky and Aqua. Where are you going? Um, I think I'll be picking Ducky. For, uh, and probably put him support. Um, just rounds out our team very, very nicely, you know. Um, good comms, got the accent and, and such. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Ducky. <laughs> Ducky it is, which means Aqua immediately goes over to to you. Find okay. And again, you know, I, I'd mentioned it with Basket, but like, depending on where you go uh, in Smite history, I can't remember if you and Aqua overlapped, but I know there was like definitely periods of time where he was a, a like. Aquaman in the Waves stands out at an SCTC team name that I used to cast, and I know that you used to be down there. So having Aqua on your team, feeling confident with it? Oh yeah, that's that's nice. I'll take it, you know. And we're gonna. I like my team. We're gonna have some fun, I think, and win. And win. That's the that's the the, the biggest question, right? Solo lane having won, you having won last time around. Confidence leveled in the four guys that are on your draft that that you can do it again. Oh, I'm pretty confident. I, either one of these teams is taking it all. I think. I mean, we're looking at the finals, right? That's what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. Can be <laughs> so, Baskin, same question for you. Confidence level in the, the team that you've drafted going up against not only this guy right here, but the, the mids. We've seen all the others now, so you know what the field looks like. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, pretty confident. I think we got a good, uh, well-rounded team of uh, mechanical superstars. So, yeah. I, I, like, like I said before, I think mid is pretty uh, looking pretty scary over there, but uh, I expect it to be a solo in solo in finals. Solo versus solo finals. You guys already have a buy, so I mean, like, you're already taking it kind of easy at the very beginning. I don't even know. You might not need to double block those scrims, man. I might have lied to you. Uh, but hey, thanks for the draft. Thanks for your time. Good luck next week. We'll throw it to the desk to break it down and tell us what's next. Well, that's now all 10 of our teams, all five roles fully drafted out. Again, they'll be starting off their competition this coming Thursday. We're not. Taking a, a week or so off, we're going to be immediately starting up on Thursday, 11 a.m. with the roles playing up against each other. Now, while we will have two portions of this bracket, we'll have an actual full bracket taking place. That'll be all the randomized roles fighting off against each other, where the only time that we would see role versus role in that bracket would be at the finals. The opposite one would actually be in our secondary one. We'll have our actual role versus role all the way through for all five teams to see who wins out in that regard. And we can take a look once more at all of the drafts that have been picked up here, starting over with the carries and get coast and vote. If I'm going to do this with each one, who do you think wins out at least in the carries spot for their draft? Is it a coast or a vote? Man, I forgot what I said earlier, uh, but looking at it now, I don't love either of these. <laughs> <laughs> Cyclone got costed. I'll, I'll give it to coast. Yeah, I, I think I'll put my, I think I'll toss my coin over towards coast team as well. A pretty strong roster for both of them, we can move on to our next one, which is the jungles that got drafted between. You had Oath and Panatom, and I remember at this point you said that Panatom clears in oh, his draft. Oh, that's low drafts. diff. That's low diff for Panatom. Do you think that this is the, the worst draft among the four so far? Not for Panatoms, but for Oaths. Do you think that this is the, the weaker of the four that we've seen so far? I'm thinking Oath like just was just looking at faces, and if like someone's eye caught him, he's just like, <laughs> okay, that one. Uh, Oath did not put a lot of thought into this draft. Yeah, so so far... Panatom may be the favorite of the four that have been drafted between those. We can take a look at the mid laners for our next one. I'm sorry, the supports will be our, our next one to go up there. So we got Hurrywind and Jake's team. Hurrywind, remember drafting a roar and also picking up Preds, Gamma, and Quig. Opposite side, Jake took Genetics, Wrong You, Mike, and Neil. They didn't seem super confident about either of these two support roles. Kind of felt like both of them were kind of sitting in that mid pack. Do you think that these support teams maybe? diff up against some of the other squads that have already been shown. Man, the more I look at it, the the, the three-man core of Hurry, Aurora, and Quig, I, I've got some confidence in. Uh, and, and, you know, Hurry's always got a really bright mind for the game, so he says to me, Gamma can off-roll. Uh, I don't know exactly where he's going to put Gamma, but I, I trust him as a player. Between the two of these, I, I, I'll, I'll go Hurry. Okay. Do I go Hurry? Do you? I, uh, <laughs> it's... 
I'm going Jake. I'm going Jake. No okay. reason. I okay. Just no reason. I just – no reason. I'll okay. go Jake. So maybe a Jake selection there. We can take a look at the mid laners, which is the fourth round of them. Now, this is one that, again, initially before coming into this one, maybe felt a little less confident in the mid lane selection, but maybe now looking at the full draft, and I'm going to put at least my vote – over towards what Venenu was able to draft up here, grabbing the the brothers with each other, Pagon and Benny and then getting Snoopy and Hawk as well. Do you think that this is a Venenu diff on his draft? Do you think this is the maybe the the better of the mids? Man, I I was so proud of Ven watching this draft right here. He grabs Pagon. I'm like perfect selection. Can't believe we're getting gifted a a, a Pagon here. Grabs Benny as well. I'm like this is it. We're lining it up. This is optimal. The the routing, the pathing, it's perfect. And I'm like, all right, easiest Paul selection of his life. And he goes for the Snoop. Snoopy. Goes for the Snoop over Paul. The Snoop troop. If he if he takes Paul right there, I'm pretty sure this roster just wins out. Like, I, I would have taken them against the field. Wow. Like, I, I, I really think so. So it was number one, but now it's Snoopy in place of Paul. Yeah, he might be, like, number four now or something. Number four. But so he's, so definitely, he's definitely clearing my boy Dardes. So top half, at least here for Venenu's in theory. We have one more round of drafts. That was the Soul Inners that just finished out. And, man, Baskin really pulled together a strong roster here. Do you think that this, now with the potential blunder that Venenu had not picking up Paul, do you think that Baskin or Final K's roster is kind of clear as the top ones? Man, Baskin Baskin played it really well here. This is, this is like, maybe the only role where I felt like pick order really mattered and, and getting that first pick was really important. Uh, I, I really like what Baskin's put together. There, there, there's a world where it, it, if Final K is like five IQ points lower, Baskin even clears harder. But fortunately, Final K making good selections himself has weakened Baskin's roster, but not enough that it's going to give him the edge. So I'll, I'll say Wu Young Kim on the dub. So now that we've got a chance to see all ten of the rosters, and we'll get to talk about more of them as the Roll Stars event kind of gets closer, and especially as the actual event is taking place. Who do you think wins out in the end just initially, you know, just uh, off of initial what we've seen right here, right now, not taking any other factors in, not giving them this time to kind of cook everything up? Who do you think comes out on top from the event? Oh, man. It brings me no joy to say this. But really? I, I, I think it might be a soul inner team. I, I really do. It's, pro it's probably one of those two. So solo lane winning out on this one. I think I, I think I might be putting Soul Lane up there. I think between Baskin and Final K, they've drafted a pretty strong one. I think Panatom or Venenu probably maybe the next two, at least in my guess there. But if you're wondering how the actual week is going to break down, we do have a bracket of schedule available for you guys for next week, or I should say at least the schedule to show you guys that will go through. So we'll have Team Coast versus Team Dardes as our first match, and then Venenu and Panatom. Wow, two powerhouse rosters already squaring off for the second one on our first day. Then Jake versus Oath, Hurrywind versus team vote will be after that one and then Baskin's team will take on the winner from match one and Final K will take on the winner of match two that's because the Soul Laners last time we had a Roll Stars event the Solos won out so they got their first round by and it'll be the winners of match three and five winners of match six and four and then Saturday and the start of Sunday is where the second part of this event comes through where yes we're having the randomized roles playing against each other and then they're all going for the finals and the big prize there We'll have our individual role versus role. So it'll be our carries against each other. We'll have our supports against each other all the way through all of the roles to see not just who the best roles are over the course of the entire event, but in those matches, who the best team of those players in the role will be, who's going to be the best carries, the best mids, so on and so forth. So to break it down even more simply, uh, the yellow matches on your schedule there, that's the money. You win those, you win out on all that, you're in the green, right? You, that's, that's where you're making your dosh. The blue matches are for fun. That's and for a bit of bragging rights. Yeah, so yellow equals cash, blue equals bragging rights. More than anything at the end of the day. And they could, starting all over on Thursday at 11 a.m. This Thursday, like the Thursday that's four days away from now is when that one will all kick off. Starting at 11 a.m. every single day. It'll be best of threes throughout the entire event except for the grand finals, which will be a best of five to see who is the true roll star king here in the Smite Pro League and the SCC. But that's it for us here on the Roll Stars Draft Show and the Divisional All-Stars that we just had taking place over the course of the weekend. Thank you all so much for tuning in on behalf of myself, Mifflin, and Casters, everyone behind the scenes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at Roll Stars.